Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I want to talk about something that is long overdue as a discussion topic on this channel. For those of you who clicked on this video because you're a knife enthusiast, let me ask you something. What's the single most obnoxious thing that somebody could say to you about the whole knife enthusiast world? I know a lot of you are saying it in your heads right now and you're ready to say it right along with me. So here we go. For that much money, you could buy a gun. Oh, how many times have we heard that? Oh, that pain in your upper stomach, right? Oh, it's because we can we can all feel the simultaneous eye rolls. In fact, I can almost hear it. Oh, I feel your pain, knife community. Yeah. We've heard that a lot. That's that's a really dumb statement. And I know that um, <laughs> I know that that's going to light some people up because there are plenty of people watching this video who have said that before or who, you know, wholeheartedly believe that it is ridiculous to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on an object that is simply made to cut when you could spend the same amount of money or less on an object that shoots, right? Let's break that down. I'm going to be fair about this, but let's break that down. I said in a video a while back um, that this channel gets 65,000 comments a year. It's actually closer to 80,000 after I got my year-end report from YouTube. And uh, rest assured, I got the whole, you could buy a gun for that comment a lot. <laughs> it's everywhere, right? If you like knives, you have seen that comment. Everybody has a different idea of what is expensive or inexpensive, and it's based on their own personal value system, what they will or won't pay a certain amount of money for, depending on their experience with it, right? So I'm going to break this down. I've had this conversation many times with people who have left that comment. And what I've found is that most of the time when people leave that comment, number one, they're definitely from the firearm community. I mean, that goes without saying, right? They've stumbled in. I always imagine like Yosemite Sam, like, girl, and he just like tumbles into the wrong cartoon and he just doesn't, <laughs> he just doesn't understand where he is. That's the picture that I get in my mind, right? Firearm people, I can feel that heat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Listen, um, I've tried to break this down with uh, people who leave that comment. I found that um, generally the case is that they haven't really thought much about it beyond the surface of what they're saying, right? I say, well, why do you think that? Well, because, you know, a firearm can hit its target from a long ways away, right? They're also, you know... I mean, there, there's there's more going on in terms of like the construction of it, but it, it, you know, functionally, it can hit its target from a long ways away. And a knife, you got to be right up close. And I say, oh, okay. So basically what you're saying is, is that the potential value of an item is limited to its offensive or defensive capability. Well, yeah, right? It's, I mean, it's a knife. Like what is it? Well, that's what it's made for, right? It's, it's made to you know, very specifically as an offensive or defensive item. And I are you, are you sure about that? You're sure that all knives, that's their only function? Well, I mean, okay, that they can cut, you know, boxes and stuff open, but that's, you know, there's not a lot of value. I can get, I can buy a, a you know, a utility box cutter at Home Depot for $5 and it can do that. I'm like, okay, so that, so it's basically just function. That's the only thing that you can wrap your head around. That's the entire foundation of value in your head. Yeah, that's what it's reduced to. That's it. Firearm people oftentimes, not all firearm people, right? If you like, so there are people watching this video who like firearms and they like knives and they probably, some of them also like watches and pens and lighters and all sorts of crazy stuff, right? But we are, uh, the knife community and the firearm community, is we're real close together. It's not likely that you're going to get on YouTube and watch videos about knives and not accidentally stumble into firearm content and vice versa. The problem is, is that for some people, very specifically, because firearms are oftentimes viewed, uh, I think by a massive percentage, I'm not going to try and speak for everybody who's into firearms, 
They're viewed as a massive, by a mass majority. Well, not, I don't want to say majority. There's just a massive population of people who are into firearms who, you know, view them as very specifically offensive or defensive catalysts. So that mentality extends to things like knives. And these people, for whatever reason, are incapable of viewing them as anything other than exactly that. So... You spent how much on this? For that much money, I could buy a gun. Listen, if you're really, really into tacos, right? Let's say you are a dollar menu taco enthusiast, right? You spent $1,000 on a shoe graph. For that much money, I could have bought 869 tacos plus tax. <laughs> if you're into baseball cards, right? For that much money, I could have bought a whatever card. You're into fashion, tech, Maybe you're into the automotive industry. For that much money, I could have bought this part for my car, right? Um, reducing it solely to utility is an incredibly primitive way of thinking, right? People who are involved in the firearm community, I think if we, um, you know, set the parameters within that specific community, right? Talking about elements that might make a firearm more desirable or more expensive that have nothing to do with utility, right? Right? Think about old firearms that are associated with American history, or maybe there was a limited supply of this or that, or somebody handmade a very specific firearm and did this special etching or did something special to it that made it more desirable, not because of some function all the time, right? But just some maybe aesthetic property or just availability property makes it more expensive, more desirable. Right? Would that make sense? I would think most firearm enthusiasts would go, well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So why can't that idea apply to anything else? I found that, and I know it sounds like I'm really coming down on firearm people, but it's because we only see that type of comment, truthfully, we really only see it present in one community interaction, right? You don't see the baseball card community coming over to the knife community and telling them they're crazy for spending money on knives and they could be buying baseball cards. Same way with tech, right, or fashion, or whatever, the automotive industry. There's a million others. You also don't see knife people going over to those communities going, for that much money, I could buy, like, this knife, this knife, and then... No, you don't see that. You also don't see knife people going over to the firearm community and saying, oh, my God, you spent $1,500 on a blah, 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 whatever, whatever. I'm not, I don't really know anything about firearms. For that much money, I could have bought this. You don't see that. Very specifically, I know people are going to want to argue with me, but that really, it's not the case. Very specifically, it is firearm people knocking on our doors. Not really knocking. They stumble in, right? Or they kick a hole in the wall. <laughs> they would stumble into a knife video, right? A lot of them are already aware. They, like, know that expensive knives exist, and they're just offended. How could these things cost as much as my beloved firearms, Right? So they come in and then they just leave the comment, right? I don't know exactly what the intended, what the idea is, what, what they assume will change as a result of it, but it is very specifically firearm people who do that under knife content. And, you know, knife people generally have the same reaction. We go, I, because we, that's what we wanted to buy. <laughs> that's, we weren't looking for right, a, a firearm. Um, we were looking for this because this is, you know, this is the enthusiast community that we, you know, decided to be a part of. And those same elements are present here, right? A knife is, you know, in its base form, an object that cuts, that's designed to cut. And sure, it could be an offensive or defensive catalyst. A rolling pin could be an offensive or defensive catalyst. And within our own knife enthusiast community, we have those sub-communities that specifically believe, I like, for example, you know, you could say, uh, some, some people out there in the knife community would say, I am a knife enthusiast, but I'm a combat and like defensive enthusiast. And that, so I only view, you know, cutting objects as that. And they actually, you know, some of them really hate the fact that there are hi hyper expensive enthusiast built knives, right? They'll argue function into the ground. Um, that happens, right? Some people are pure collector enthusiast and then they scoff at some of the tactical stuff and some of the military or some of the combat, right? That community exists. There's sub communities, right? The knife world is no different than any other enthusiast community, right? When you're talking about objects that have number one, a function. And also, and in like a, a general like collector sort of enthusiast community driving, you know, a different portion of it, right? You got people who drive race cars and you got people who collect race cars. 
So they're the value to them is based on something entirely different. What's the point of this? All right, you're saying the same thing over and over again, Metal Complex. We get it, right? What's the whole point of this? What do you hope to change? You're telling us that we can't change anything. What do you hope to change? Nothing. <laughs> I just think it's something that should be talked about. I've actually not watched another video on this topic specifically on YouTube. The best thing that can happen, right? I don't expect to change any minds, right? People who are deep in the enthusiast portion or, you know, maybe it's not even the, maybe they just, you know, like to use, like to shoot targets and stuff. We've got, I don't know, right? It's not my, I, I accept that it exists and I accept, you know, if somebody were to tell me uh, there are firearms out there that cost well over a hundred thousand dollars, I'd be like, wow, that's a lot of money. But I mean, you know, it's the same as any other enthusiast community. I'm sure there's a reason behind it. If the demand is there, right? and somebody with the means of buying that, they have that much interest in it, right? Well, supply and demand, it's just, that's, it is what it is. Okay, it's not really hurting me, so I'm gonna keep doing my thing over here, right? The best outcome is that we get somebody who has a general, like, uh, well, yeah, knives are cool. I don't know why some of you guys pay thousands of dollars for them when you could buy a, a firearm. The best case scenario is that that person slowly learns about why some people will spend X amount of money on a knife, right? It doesn't have to be thousands. It could be hundreds, right? Within the, just within the knife community, we, we get on each other. Why would you spend a thousand dollars on a pocket knife when you could buy, you know, 20, $50 pocket knives, right? Knife people do that to each other, but not really anybody else. The best thing we could do is invite these people who don't understand into the knife community and Explain why, right? Best case scenario, you get a new friend and a, a new member of the community. Worst case scenario, you know, Yosemite Sam crawls back through the hole into his own cartoon and does, you know, whatever Yosemite Sam was doing. <laughs> it's funny, right? Internet communities are funny. There's always going to be salty people. There's always going to be angry people. Always going to be trolls, right? And this video is certainly not going to slow down the comments about you know, not understanding why when you could buy a firearm. Not going to do that, right? But, you know, if I can use this, uh, put a positive spin on, on this for some people, right? The next time you see that comment, don't, don't, don't throw a, a rock back, right? And, not, you know, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do things because I definitely usually throw a rock back and I try to make a joke out of it, and right? But I could do well to take my own advice. The next time you see that, offer to help explain, in a non-sarcastic way, right? Hey, the, the 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 more people who are involved with our community, the more people who are who understand it, right? It's it's all for the better. There's no reason why you, as a knife enthusiast, at the same time, if you don't like me, I'm not. I don't know much about firearms. There's no reason, right, that I I shouldn't you know let somebody uh, give somebody the opportunity to explain that community to me. That's the best outcome is to be educated, to, uh, you know, have an open mind and, uh, you know, just a willingness to learn. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. Then you go on and you do your own thing and no harm, no foul, right? But I think that if I can uh, play damage mitigation with some of this friction, right, or if that is the result of this video, that would make me happy, right? So this is the Demco. Oh, and by the way, if you are a knife person or a gun person or you're somebody from the baseball card community, right, and you didn't know knives get expensive, Buckle up, because this might be a frozen sledgehammer to the face for you. Um, this is the Demco 8020, made in the United States. This particular one sporting titanium and CPM 20 CV. These knives originally went for about $625 and likely go for a lot more on the secondary market now. That's the nice thing about the knife world, is that sometimes, and this is me giving an, an example of how I might have this conversation with people. Um, the nice thing about the knife world is um, that while some of these things might seem radically expensive for what you're getting, like, yeah, it's titanium, and, and if you didn't know, CPM 20 CV is a premium steel composition, right? U.S. manufacturing is certainly expensive. Um, but uh, so, you know, but still, a lot of people say that's still, given that information, these are still wildly expensive. Well, the nice thing is a knife like this, I can almost guarantee I can take it out and it's in perfect condition now, but I could take it out, beat it up, chew up the edge, get it dirty, get gunk on the inside of it, right? Spill lemonade all over it and probably still sell it on the secondary market for the same or more than what I paid. Now, some people, to some people, no, but would it sell? Well, given the demand specifically for the AD20, right? 
Uh, yeah, probably. Next up, we have a Hinder XM24, which is also a premium US manufactured knife, um, utilizing, in this case, carbon fiber, titanium, and once again, CPM 20 CV steel. Same kind of thing. This one's in perfect condition, and it's also sporting a rare finish, and I don't even want to bother explaining steel flame, but if those of you who know, you know. This knife I've probably got $850 or so in, and I am 100% certain that if I decided to sell it, it would sell for more, right? To another knife enthusiast, somebody who specifically needs a pocket knife to go out and do regular pocket knife things is probably not interested in spending well over $1,000 on something like this because that's not their foundation of value, right? They're not, that's not the world that they live in. Next up, we have the Vero Isotope. Now, this is not manufactured in the United States, but this particular one with a Timascus inlay, right? First off, it's an integral, meaning one piece titanium. Timascus inlay, Timascus being folded titanium that was then anodized or, or basically layered titanium that's made the same way as Damascus. Two different compositions, so yielding after the anodization process, different colors and things like that. Generally, material that um, knife people will pay more money for because the process that's involved with making it and just the visuals at the end. It's just really, it's interesting. It also can't corrode and it's very, very durable. That makes the fact that this is M390 and specifically this version of the knife, there's only nine of the, uh, the Timascus Isotope, right? So I paid about $850 on the secondary market for this guy and it is definitely something that's worth a lot more money now because there are people, right? Even if the vast majority of people have no interest in spending that much money on it, there definitely is a small community of people who will gladly Spend a lot of money. And when I say gladly, I mean any, pretty much anything, save a couple of knives on the table, any, any of these. You put them up on eBay and they're gone in seconds, right? That hinderer or the Demco, I mean it. Seconds from putting it up for sale. It will be gone um, for drastically more than it was. It's because they are incredibly unavailable and the enthusiast portion of the knife community that's interested in these knives are willing to pay a lot of money. Again, not everybody, but a lot of people. Sure, go off Quantum. This is a knife that you can get right now. They're expensive for how they're made and how accurately and uh, professionally they are machined. Sporting titanium and M390. There's also kind of a Sure, go off has kind of a cult following, right? So this is an $1,100 pocket knife that probably would sell for a little less, right, uh, than what I paid for right now. But you know, this is the type of thing that an enthusiast will purchase, whether they can make money off it or not, which I think is a good point. Not everybody who's buying stuff like this is buying it specifically as an investment. Some people are paying this much money for these items, and it's an added bonus that they know that the value, you know, it's going to retain value. But it's really just to enjoy the object. It's not because they, for a lot of people, they're not going to use it. They're not going to try and flip it. They're just enjoying it. And that element is present in some corner of every enthusiast community. Whether people understand it or not, it simply is present, right? Same thing with the Rockstead Higo 2. This is a, a little more expensive knife, $1,500. Probably not a knife that's going to sell for more, right? Because these are somewhat available, and general consensus on these things is that they're pretty overpriced, right? So if I were to sell that, it'd be a little less. Now, we're going to change gears here for this next one. This uh, dagger here is a Sharp by Design Custom Arch Nemesis. Uh, these are handmade. There are some machine elements, but largely handmade right here in the United States by somebody named Brian Nadeau, who does these one at a time. Uh, the level of detail and complexity in something like this is uh, rivaled by almost nothing else. This particular arch nemesis is, um, this model is, is very, very sought after by knife enthusiasts because you just can't get them. Uh, Brian will make these when he decides to and then he will sell them and they're knives that are gone. When he puts them up on Instagram, whatever it is that he decided to make, it's gone in seconds. The moment that he's got one for sale, they are gone. I think they start at something like $1,300. This was actually a gift from my wife that she had custom made. And I think it was something around $1,500. I can't really remember what she said. Um, but yeah, um, and uh, again, you know, it's, a, it's an object that can cut. Um, but to many people, myself included, it's an object that, um, you know, there is extra value in the idea that somebody um, put their heart and soul into, put time, manual labor into, um, and, uh, you know, also valuation of exclusivity. Not many people own the arch nemesis dagger. Um, and that in and of itself will drive the value up. Now there are 
so many other elements to this. I'm, I'm giving, you know, such a surface level explanation to people who don't quite understand this. But rest assured, there is uh, no way that I could cram all of the reasoning of a knife enthusiast into a single video. My proof of that is that I am a knife enthusiast and uh, a YouTube creator who has 2,200 uploads trying to document as much as possible in this insane world, right? Just as, the, just as is the case with any other enthusiast community, there's simply no way to, you know, there's no way. It would take multiple lifetimes to explain or to get somebody to change their thought process completely, right? Let alone understand it all. Um, next up, we have the most expensive knife on the table. This is the type of stuff that is the most con in, uh, confusing to people from other enthusiast communities and, you know, even internally in the knife world. There are plenty of people who just don't understand. Um, this is a full custom um, Herman Dragonfly. These are made in Poland. Uh, the scales are entirely Timascus folded uh, layered titanium. And then the blade looks a lot like Damascus. It's actually something called Damacor, which is proprietary and made by the Damasteel Company. Um, it has a single core of steel, the composition of which is proprietary, but very similar to what we in the enthusiast community know as Vanax, which is a very, very premium steel, something that, you know, people who like to buy premium the folding knives or, or fixed blades, uh, Vanax is a composition that people will pay a lot of money for. It's also a powder formed composition. So if you didn't know, it's not all steel is the same. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There are thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of different types of compositions of steel, right? So all steel can be sharp, but how long that sharpness lasts, how resilient that sharpness is to chipping or rolling, uh, how resilient the composition is to corrosion, right? How easy it is to machine or sharpen. Those are all elements that um, uh, users, collectors, enthusiasts, and knife makers all consider, right? And they have varying impacts on value depending on, you know, what type of person you are, what type of knife person you are. Anyways, a knife like this you know, Timascus and Damacor, you're probably looking at anywhere from 2000 to 10000 right? I mean, it just depends on who made it, what all was involved, right? How uh, enthusiastic uh, any specific community surrounding that maker is, right? How limited their supply is, right? What they're capable of doing. Is it just a one-man operation? Is it a 10-man operation? Is it a 100-man operation? There's so many different elements. Again, not enough to cover in a single video, but... My goal here was to do exactly what I said I think other people should do is just make an attempt, right? Throw a line out there and say, hey, if you're interested in learning a little bit as, as far as why all these crazy knife people spend so much on this stuff, right? Well, this is a little, you know, it's kind of an appetizer tray for the knife world. There's a lot more here. <laughs> There's a lot more here. And we're, you know, most of us are never going to try to pressure people into spending more money than they're comfortable spending. In fact, my channel, the entire purpose of it is to help different types of people find the knife that's right for them, whether their budget is $20 or $2,000, right? Or up. Uh, I cover everything. Uh, the idea being that we don't all have to agree, but the general consensus is. Knives are interesting. Let's all be interested in them together. All right. This was a wild video. I hope you guys were at least mildly entertained by this. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore, whoops, metal underscore complex. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there is definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.